Thank you, Glenda. Good morning. Welcome to our worship service at the Hampton United Methodist Church. Those of you who are here, along with those of, us, those of you who will be joining us later on KLMJ and on Facebook. One announcement this morning, the flowers on the altar are for our new great, grand, are given by our new great grandparents, Jean and Julie Eisentrigger. Their great granddaughter, Grizz, was born on August 7th. So congratulations, Julie and Jean. <laughs> My name is Sarah Baird, and I will be serving as your worship leader this morning, and James Chambers will be leading our singing. God is good. All, All the time. time. All the time. God, God is, is good. good. Will you please join me for the call to worship? Disciples of Christ, have you come today to receive a good word? Yes, yes. we come, come to receive a good word and blessing to carry care. with us into the world. God blesses you when we worship together. Are you ready to worship? Yes, we come to worship God together as we share in the good word of God's grace. Then come, let us worship with rejoicing. Praise be to God who gives us wisdom and draws us together as the family of God. Amen. And now would you please stand and join me for our first hymn, number uh, one or 451, Be Thou My Vision. together in our prayer of confession. Gracious God, you have placed within the hearts of all your children a longing for your word and a hunger for your truth. Grant that believing in the one whom you have sent, we may know him to be the true bread of heaven and the food of eternal life. Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom and with you and the Holy Spirit be glory and honor forever and ever. Re receive now this assurance of pardon. In Christ, God sent redemption for all. In Christ, God feeds our hungry souls. In Christ, God gives the cup of salvation to thirsty people. In Christ, we are fed the bread of life. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness in Christ Jesus. We give, we give thanks, thanks to God, God for everything. Forgiveness, hope, new life. Amen. 
You may be seated even as we take comfort in the words of Psalms 111, verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All those who practice it have a good understanding. His praise endures forever. And now would you join me to sing hymn number two, number 500, uh, Spirit of God, Descend Upon My Heart. Spirit of God, descend upon my heart. pulses move, stoop to my weakness, mighty as a want, and make me love thee as I ought to love. I ask no dream, no Prophet exercise, no sudden rending of the veil of clay, no angel visit, and no open skies, but take the dimness of my soul away. Hast thou not bid me love thee, God and King? O Lord, thine own soul, heart and strength and mind, I see thy cross there, teach my heart to cling. Oh, let me seek thee, and oh, let me find. Teach me to feel that thou art always nigh. Teach me the struggles of the soul to bear, to check the rising, doubt the rebel sign. Teach me the patience of unanswered prayer. Teach me to love thee as thine angels love. One holy passion filling all my frame. A kindling of the hand descended dove, my heart an altar and thy love a flame. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we are honored to have Amy Lent playing her flute for us today for special music. She'll be playing a piece entitled Summer Music.
Thank you very much, Amy. That was beautiful. Kind of wants, makes me want to rewind to like June and do summer again. <laughs> Will you please join me in our reading of Psalms 34, 9 through 14. Fear the Lord, you his holy ones. For those who fear him want, have no want. The young lions suffer want and hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Come, O children, listen to me. I will teach you from the fear of the Lord. Which of your desires, life and covenants may days to enjoy days to enjoy good. Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. Now I invite you to stand if you're able for the reading of the gospel. Today's gospel lesson is from John 6:51. Jesus said, I am the living bread, and come down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. This is God's word for God's people. Thanks be to God. Amen. Well, good morning. We are not serving Holy Communion this morning, but we are in communion, I hope, with one another and with our Lord God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, come and be with us today. Amen. Amen. Well, our Psalms lesson, indeed, it says, Fear the Lord, you His holy ones. And so this is that accepted assumption that you are holy. You are His holy people. Now, like to share with you an, an Old Testament lesson that is, is not necessarily a part of what you have before you, but it is an interesting sequence into our message for today. From 1 Kings chapter 3, 
the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, Ask what I should give to you. And Solomon said, You have shown great and steadfast love to your servant, my father, David, because he walked before you in faithfulness and righteousness and in uprightness of heart towards you, and you have kept for him this great and steadfast love and have given him a son to sit on his throne today. Solomon goes on in this preparation for this request. He didn't just come to ask God something. God asked him to come and ask for something. And so Solomon is thinking in his mind, in his heart, you have been good to my father. And you saw in my father righteousness. Um, If this was a Father's Day sermon, and if we were taking a poll as to whether our fathers were perfect, uh, we would probably say, well, he did the best he could. Um, Because, you know, look, you know, the son is, you know, yeah, he didn't do too bad. I saw my dad last night, he was here, and, and, and we're friends, so that's, that's pretty good. But, but Solomon, in speaking to God in this conversation, Solomon knew, he says, you know, my dad had the law the first five books of the Old Testament, King David. And David was collecting some of these psalms. And so David worked with what he had, and yet Solomon watched and said, well, you know, he had this special relationship and, and, and with God, but then this relationship with what he had in God's Word Sometimes he was obedient to God's word and sometimes he wasn't. And so Solomon, knowing these things and knowing God is waiting for his request, Solomon said, you have given your word to my father and I have your word. Now give me your wisdom that I might know what your word means to me and not just my father. What does your word mean to me? And so asking for wisdom is in scriptural language asking Oh, like Jesus said, I must go away, but I will send you another, and he will teach you all things. He will teach you wisdom. Solomon is saying, what I really need is the Holy Spirit. I need you to teach me. In Matthew chapter 7, verse 7, uh, Jesus is teaching in his lifetime uh, on earth, I will say that, Um, Jesus said, ask and it will be given to you. Speak and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives and the one who seeks finds and the one who knocks, the door will be opened to you. Now, we only had one verse in our gospel lesson. That one verse, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. What a big verse. I'm sparing you. We just cut it down to one. But you've noticed the way I preach, you are receiving many. But it is the word of God. In Matthew chapter 7, we're not done yet because there's one more verse from Matthew 7. He says, which of you, if your son asked for bread, will give him a stone? And so we have to be careful 
when we see the gospel lesson that he says, I am the living bread, we have to be careful that we're not looking at the menu of life and saying, oh yeah, I think I'll try item number 47 instead of item number one, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. This is the message of the day that Jesus is offering for us himself in John chapter 13 says verily very truly I tell you whoever receives one whom I send receives me and whoever receives me receives the one who sent me well in that verse and in our spiritual teaching that, you know, we teach our kids, come into my heart, come into my heart, come into my heart, Lord Jesus. And sometimes we fail to teach that symbolism of what it means. I was on the internet the other night, and a, a man was talking about the difference between Christianity and every other religion. The difference between Christianity and every other religion is every religion worships their God and their gods are up there or down there. Christianity says, my God is in here. God is in us. This morning on the way between churches, I've, I've already preached twice already, between churches I rewrote part of my sermon and I added this line, this story. And I was thinking about it because I, it's so close to another story that I heard, an, an old story about a man that it was arrested and he was thrown in jail, he was thrown in solitary confinement. Now, anybody in, in your history remember, remember how that story goes? Solitary confinement, they throw you in a jail and they feed you bread and water, right? Bread and water. But somebody in the jail had compassion upon this one prisoner. They fed him bread and water, but they also, the, the, the warden must have been a Gideon or something, that they put a Bible in there too. And on day one, he had bread and water, and he was kind of bored, so he started reading. He's in solitary confinement. What else are you going to do? On day two, they came in. And they said, here's more bread and water. And he looked up and says, oh, you interrupt me. I was reading. And he says, what are you reading? He says, I am reading this mystery. This mystery. And it says, well, what's it about? Well, this mystery tells me that I am in here and I am not alone. And the guards look around. He says, what do you mean I'm not alone? <laughs> and he looks at him and smiles and says, you go tell the warden that I'm in solitary confinement, but I'm not alone. So they went and told the warden. The warden was the one that placed the Bible in. The and, and as the warden came in, he looked around. And he says, what do you mean by I'm not alone? He says, well, you gave me the word. The word is God, and so I am not alone. God is with me. The next day, the warden came to visit again, and he came with the chaplain, and the chaplain carried a bowl and a cup, and he received not bread and water, but bread and wine. He received fellowship. He received encouragement. He received a little bit of love and a little bit of grace that when he remembered he wasn't alone, then maybe the warden and the chaplain remembered that no one should be alone. 
this week. Well, I'll start last Sunday. Last Sunday, after three services, I went to Waverly for one more service because, you know, I like going to church. In Waverly, there was a service of recognition for the new district superintendent in that district. And as I walked in, I noticed that our district superintendent was here. I didn't really talk to him because I knew that I had my interview on Tuesday with him and I would spend an hour with him. But I did say hello to the bishop and to the district secretary and then I kind of made my way off to uh, go visit with family. On Tuesday, I had my interview with the DS, and the DS at that interview, he asked me to say hello to the congregation and to the community. And one of the questions he asked is, how do we as an annual conference, how do we as staff in Des Moines let the congregations know that we care, that we care? And so I told them a few things. Because sometimes congregations think that we're alone and separate. Our theology is that we are a connectional system. Well, you know, the very next day after, well, we're here in Hampton, the next day the news broke and things had happened overnight here in Hampton, some bad things. The next day, my computer started dinging, and my cell phone started ringing, and I realized just how true that we are a connectional system, because from Des Moines, the assistant to the bishop called, and the first thing she said, Dennis, how can we help? How can we help? And then she said, you know, the bishop would have called if the bishop had been within the country. She's out traveling. But Dennis, she'll call. She'll pray. How can we help? God is with us. And we are in fellowship with one another. Ecumenical within our system and ecumenical within the church as a whole because we are in communion with Jesus Christ and He is in communion with the Father. And through the Holy Spirit, we are in communion with the whole church. And as I shared with you last week the Methodist social principles, I was amazed this morning at the first service that suddenly we found out we needed to change one of the hymns. And as I was singing the third verse to the song, and they will know we are Christians by our love. The third verse, we will guard each man's dignity and save each man's pride. We live in a community that has many people also living here. They may not attend this church. They may not have a driver's license. They may not have ownership or rental, but they are here, and they have dignity and pride because they are children of God, and we are God's witnesses to them if we do it right. The Apostle Paul writes in Ephesians chapter 5, verses 15 through 20, Be careful, then, how you live, not as unwise people, but as wise. How many of you are praying for wisdom like Solomon? How many of you are praying for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit that we might be able to read Scripture and know what it means so that we might apply it? 
so that we might, as the Apostle Paul says, make the most of the time that we have available. Because the time, that times are evil. The times are evil. My gospel message or the message for the day is see, see eat, drink, and be holy. Half of you got it wrong. Half of you were going back to the quote from Isaiah and Ecclesiastics, the preacher back in the Old Testament that didn't know anybody because he didn't know that God's grace is available for us and he was wondering, is life vanity? He looked and he saw that there's a time for peace and that there's a time for war. There's a time for love. And there's a time for hate. Solomon asked for wisdom so that he would know which to choose. Peace or war, love or hate. It's time for us to know what time it is. So that we can be careful how we live. Not as unwise people, but as wise. Do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Well, the Apostle Paul is, is brave. He's, he's getting into the culture of that time. He's, he's preaching application. He's preaching what you should and what you shouldn't do. He goes on, he says, do not get drunk with wine. I have talked with many a person and they tell me their stories and it always goes back to that, that well, when I was younger, I went to this party. And he says, I, I've, I've drank too much on occasion. When you tell me your story, I hope your story is better than that because God has better than that for you. The Apostle Paul in that culture and now in this time, in this culture, from this pulpit, I will read these words. Do not get drunk with wine, but be filled with the Spirit. Even as you come together in the fellowship and the body of believers, even as you sing songs and play the flute and, and share hymns and spiritual songs to one another, singing and making melody to the Lord in your hearts, giving thanks to God the Father at all times and for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Can we do that? Can we pray for that? We, we sang the song, Be Thou My Vision. I think we're really, really close to being able to understand what it means when Jesus says, I am the bread. And now, if we do understand, we'll know what it means to eat, drink, and be holy. Communion's a week away, but maybe you're going to lunch. Maybe you'll be sitting across the table from family or friend or neighbor Maybe you'll look at them and say, please pass the bread. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. And now would you join me for a number hymn number 2041 2041 in the faith we sing hymn no thou art worthy right after we pray I, our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now would you care to join me, for thou art worthy. Pray together. Holy God, in this moment of offering, we stand before you acknowledging your boundless wisdom and unfailing love. As we present our gifts, we also lift our prayers for guidance and understanding. Grant us the wisdom to discern your will and the courage to walk in your ways. Bless these offerings and our lives so that we may be able to continue to worship you in spirit and in truth. Amen. Amen. It was a wonderful concert last night, Divinity Trio. I looked up the definition for divinity, and I thought maybe they would serve divinity at the end of the concert. <laughs> oh. Divinity, divine nature, divinity, God's realm, God's kingdom. And yet Jesus said he is the bread of life, divinity, God in us, divinity amongst you, godliness, holiness, sacredness, and blessedness. Thou art divine when thou art at worship in God's presence. Grant, O Lord, that we may see in you the fulfillment of all our needs and may turn from every false set of satisfaction to feed on the true and living bread which you have given to us in Christ Jesus. Send us forth from this place of worship that we might enter now into the fields of mission. May we be your witnesses. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now would you join me for our closing hymn, number 2176, In the Faith We Sing, Make Me a Servant, and we will sing it twice. Make me a 
servant, humble and weak. Lord, let me lift up those who are weak, and may the prayer of my heart always be, make me a servant, make me a servant, make me a servant today. Make me a servant, humble and weak. Lord, let me lift up those who are weak. And may the prayer of my heart always be. Make me a servant. Make me a servant, make me a servant.